search it up with Sienna, the web series where I use IMDb to discover and talk about all different types of movies and TV shows, and how the people in front of and behind the camera not only make it all possible, but are somehow all interconnected. I talk directly with the talent about their backstories and experiences on and off set and what they're up to today. On my last episode, I talked about Mean Girls with director Mark Waters. Marcy Learoff, one of my previous guests, was the casting director on Mean Girls and was also the casting director on Pretty in Pink. So today, I'm gonna to be talking about Pretty in Pink and I have a truly amazing guest joining me, the director of Pretty in Pink, Howard Deutsch. In addition to Pretty in Pink, Howard Deutsch also directed classic movies and TV shows, including Some Kind of Wonderful, The Great Outdoors, The Whole Ten Yards, The Replacements, My Best Friend's Girl, Empire, and Young Sheldon, and so many more. And now, without further ado, here's my interview with Howard Deutsch. What interested you in movies as a kid? I was interested in movies on television because I was a bad student and I would come home and there was a show on TV called Million Dollar Movie when I was growing up mm -hmm. and I would go to my room, get some pretzels and, um, and a Yoohoo or Coca-Cola <laughs> and I would, I would kind of escape that way from what I thought were really big problems or what was bothering me. And uh, I could also, I found that I could also, looking back on it, um, get moved, laugh, and cry, and, and um, connect with how I was really feeling instead of being kind of cut off because uh, I related to the characters. And I would guess it, was, it allowed me to, you know, kind of understand myself better. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you started out by directing music videos and movie trailers. How did you get into that? Um, I got into trailers by getting a job as a trainee at a studio in New York called United Artists where my dad worked. Mm -hmm. And um, they made the movie trailers for their movies. And I kind of was passing by in the hallway one day. I was just delivering mail. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. And I saw these guys in a room watching these movie trailers. And I said, I, that looks cool. I like to do that. <laughs> and so they let me start, you know, learning about it. And then I ended up um, being the guy who did the advertising at the studio uh, and I had to make the trailer. So I have somebody supervise it. And I supervised the people and pick the people who would make the trailers and the posters. And um, so that's how that started. Yeah, that's cool because I mean, movie trailers is a big part of the movies because you have it's like what mostly what gets people to want to watch the movie based on the trailer. Yep. Um, and what about the music videos? How did you get into that? The music videos were I was doing a, a trailer mm -hmm. for a movie. My company was mm -hmm. uh, for a movie called Rumblefish, which Francis Ford Coppola directed, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and they wanted something called a music video. And I said, what's that? <laughs> and they said, well, it's like, you know, they explained what it was. And I said, well, I don't know how to do that. And I, I, I haven't done that. But the producer of the movie said, don't worry, I'll be there every day and I'll help you. And so I did it, but he never showed up on the set. And it was me alone. I almost had a heart attack. So um, I did it and I kind of liked directing it was uh, with a uh, the, uh, Stuart Copeland was a musician it was for a song called don't box me in mm -hmm. and, and no and I it was the first time I ever really directed on film and even though I was scared I liked it and I kind of got hooked on it and then that's how it started wow and um I've actually featured a couple of like John Hughes movies um because I know um a lot of your movies have are with John Hughes um, and on my show, including I did Uncle Buck with, um, and I interviewed Elaine Bromka, who plays the mom in Uncle Buck. Um, and then I also uh, did Home Alone, and I in interviewed executive producer Tarkin Gotch. Um, and then Pretty in Pink, I know, was your first feature. How did you meet John Hughes, and how did this movie come your way? Were you, like, were you nervous at all? Very nervous. 
<laughs> and um, the uh, it can't. It happened because I was working on a movie trailer for John Hughes for Breakfast Club. Mm. And he liked it, and he said, "You know, he had, he said, will you do the music video for uh, 16 Candles, this other movie?" He had. And I said, "Sure." And I did it, and he liked it. And then he said, "You know, he gave me a script, two scripts, if I wanted to direct one, uh, one of them, and one was Pretty in Pink." <laughs> and that's how we met, and that's how I got my chance. Wow, that's really cool. And did you know Pretty in Pink would have such a wide appeal when you first read it? No, <laughs> no, I didn't even, you know, the way these things work is usually it's a beginning or a first thing for somebody. And for me, it was. And I only knew that when I read it, it made me cry. So I thought, well, if it made me cry, I, that's better than not feeling anything. Like I said, <laughs> that as a kid, that's what I realized that why I like the movies. So I, I said, I'll do that one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And how important, um, in your opinion, is chemistry on set, whether it's chemistry um, in between the cast or even with the crew? Uh, very important, because if everybody's getting along and there's a sense of communion or that people like each other and they really want to help each other, it leaks into the work and the work is usually much better. And certainly with the actors, if there's a chemistry between certainly like a romantic movie, yeah, between the, the woman and the man, that's kind of critical. Otherwise, yeah. you don't want to watch them. Yeah, and I think that's a really good, um, what I uh, was watching at leading up to this interview to refresh my memory on the movies. And I just saw it, like the actors had really good chemistry in it and it really played a big role in um, attracting me like to the movie and making me want to watch it um, over and over again. Good. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, what was the most challenging part of filming Pretty in Pink? Um, that uh, my own, um, probably my own anxiety that I didn't necessarily think I knew what I was doing. Yeah. And knowing that it was my big chance. And so yeah. that always felt like every day, like, am I going to be able to do the right thing? So that and, um, you know, I think uh I felt responsibility like that I didn't let the actors down because they were doing a favor to me because I was not anybody who had directed before and they were taking a chance on me so I didn't want to mess it up for them I heard the ending changed um for Pretty in Pink and that Andy originally ended up with Ducky can you talk about why it changed a little bit sure it changed because when we tested the movie with an audience mm -hmm. all the girls uh, booed because they wanted Andy to get the cute boy. Yeah. And, and, and so that's why we changed it. And, then, and when we changed it, they were happier. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so for all of your movies, do you, um, do an audience, like with an audience, um, while you, yeah, yeah. So, so, so we make sure it works. Oh yeah. That, that's, that, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was done years ago. It was a famous director named Frank Capra in the 1930s, who mm -hmm. was one of the greatest directors of all time. And he used to take his movies, one of the first ones to the theater, and record on a tape recorder how many laughs there were or how many oh, wow. Yeah, and he was one of the first to start that. Yeah, did you have like any director like in particular you looked up to? Frank Capra, for sure. <laughs> um, Francis Coppola. Um, Spielberg, Mike Nichols, um, uh, 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 Ilya Kazan, a lot of great directors, um, you know, who aren't necessarily that famous, who I look up to for their work with actors, because I enjoy that. Yeah. And uh, did you know that you wanted to be like a director or in the entertainment business since you were a kid? Or was there something else you wanted to do? I wanted to be in the music business like my dad. And um, I kept getting, it wasn't working out, but, yeah. but I, that's the entertainment business. But I, I didn't know I wanted to be a director at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next movie you did was Some Kind of Wonderful, which I also love. Uh, I, was, I read that you had concerns about casting um, for Some Kind of Wonderful. Can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, yeah, because I had I did the move. I was going to do the movie and then I offered it to an actor and he said no. 
Mm -hmm. And that scared me because I said, well, if he said, and I didn't know how to do it with anybody other than him because he seemed like the right casting. So I uh, left, I said, I can't do the movie. So they hired a different director to do the movie. And that director hired a bunch of actors. And I think John Hughes wasn't really happy with what was happening. So he, the studio came back to me and said, if you still want to come back and do it with John, he'll let you come back, which I did. I regretted yeah. leaving. And so when I came back, I replaced those actors with different ones. Uh -huh. And so that's how that happened. And were you in the casting room when you were um, seeing, like, like seeing the actors um, audition? Yes. Mm -hmm. I and, always think it's good to be in the room with the actors. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it gives them, um, I think it helps you see probably a little bit more of what sure. we're and, then, and And if another actor does something that's interesting even though they don't get the part you can steal that and tell the actor you hire about it yeah um and uh who out besides the casting director what who else is in the room with you usually or does the, the producer the usually the producer and mm -hmm. maybe the writer yeah but most of the time it's just the director and the producer yeah and um do you have a specific memory that stands out the most from making some kind of wonderful? Probably that there was a girl in it who played um, uh, Amanda Jones. Yeah. And I ended up marrying her. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the biggest memory. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you, was that the first time you ever met her on that film? No, I'd met her once before, before I had, like, when I said I left the movie, I'd met her once before and asked her if she'd do the movie, and she uh, said no. <laughs> and when she said no, that was that, and that's when I left the movie. So I met her just briefly. Oh, wow. And then you, um, and then I guess you just start, uh, started talking, and then, that, and then you eventually married each other. Yeah, <laughs> what happened? Um, and do you, do you have any, like, another memory um, that you remember that? um on or like a specific memory on pretty in pink sure um i remember that we had to redo the ending because yeah. it was really really difficult to me because the script was always about true love and john cryer who played ducky really loved andy molly ringwald yeah and everything every every decision in the script was kind of based on um true love and so when the girls in the audience said we don't care we don't want her to get that guy, <laughs> it was it kind of messed me messed me up a little so that i that's a memory i have yeah definitely um and another movie i love that you worked on is the great outdoors with john candy and dan Aykroyd. there were so many things in the movie that i enjoyed including the main characters and their um like their chemistry together and the talking raccoons were real, were one of my favorite parts and the bears and even the relationships that the kids have. How was it working with John Candy and Dan Aykroyd and was it a difficult movie to direct? It was a very difficult movie to direct because the bear was really, you know, the bear didn't like to be directed. He did whatever he wanted. <laughs> And the weather was difficult. It was supposed to be like in the water skiing when John Candy was doing that. It started to snow. Oh, wow. All kinds of crazy things went wrong. Um, and, but I loved John Candy and he was the nicest man ever. Nicest oh. man ever. And Dan Aykroyd too. I still talk to Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. And they were great. Yeah, they were great together. Um, the movie was originally called um, big country oh yeah uh, which I like better but the studio <laughs> changed it to the great outdoors yeah uh, so no uh people you know and also the memory I have of that movie is when it uh, came into the theaters it didn't do well uh mm -hmm. it just did okay but over time years and years people have come to love it and that makes me feel good yeah definitely and um how would did you film this movie like in the winter because you said it started to snow no, I filmed it in the late summer. In, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I know, in California in a place called Bass Lake. But it was in the mountains, and sometimes it gets a little cold at night, and it started to snow. Oh, and John wow. Candy, and John Candy was like, I'm not getting in the water. <laughs> 
Yeah, and um, how I know this is a little bit like a rev a random question, um, but I just thought of it. How long does it usually take you um, to make the movie, like to direct? To like, it, um, it, it, it's every depends on what the movie is. Every movie is different, but the Great Outdoors took a long time. You know, it yeah. was like I think seventy days maybe of mm -hmm. shooting. Yeah, well, Pretty in Pink was only twenty three days or twenty five days. Some kind okay. of one like 30 days but then <laughs> and, you have to edit it then you have then it takes another you know two months to edit it or three months yeah before you're done it's usually a year yeah that yeah um and uh it, I heard that there may be a sequel to the great outdoors is there a, can you tell me if the, that's any truth maybe I, I I don't think yet but I've heard I read the same thing <laughs> if there is I'm not doing it uh -huh. but but I think there there might be. Yeah. Um, when you had um the the bears um because that's obviously the there was a uh, not like a fake bear it was a real bear were they already trained or did you have a trainer there? Oh, uh, we had the trainer there. His name was Bart the Bear, and he was very famous. But um, you had to really be careful because he was a bear, and and um, John Candy wasn't that happy to work with the bear because he was scared of the bear <laughs> so whenever he had to work with the bear he would come to me and say do we have to work with the bear and I was like yeah it's in the movie <laughs> so, yeah that was but um he was a great great trained bear yeah it seems I mean I think you'd have to otherwise people would get hurt too it's a good thing mm -hmm. it was yeah um and is there a movie or tv show that was your favorite to direct my favorite to direct probably, yeah, well, there was, there was a, I guess, I guess a movie I made called Grumpier Old Men um, was one of my favorites because Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon were these great, funny actors and uh, we had a good time. Yeah. And uh, is there anything that you can share with me that you're working on now? I'm working on now um, a few different things, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not nothing ready to go make yet. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I, there's a new movie I might do, but I, you know, I'm not sure about it yet. And then there's a TV show I might do, and, um, but nothing's ready to go yet. And uh, before we uh, close, I just want, I have a few um, random questions and I do this with a few of my guests and it's, I basically just ask a few random questions that uh, don't have anything to relate usually with the interview, but they're really fun to ask. And usually you try to answer it as quick as you can, but some of it, if you need more time, it's obviously okay. Um, so here we go. So what was your most memorable location that you filmed in? Hmm. Uh, probably, I did a movie called The Replacements in the football stadium, the Baltimore Ravens football stadium, and that's memorable because the whole movie was in the football stadium. <laughs> um, what's a TV show you love to watch? I love to watch the television show called Everybody Loves Raymond. Oh, I like, I like it. Yeah. yeah, funny. And I like to watch, um, just forgot the name of it, uh, The Wire. The Wire, okay. Um, potato chips or pretzels? Yeah, that's tough. Probably potato chips now. It used to be pretzels. Yeah. I'm actually allergic to potatoes, so I'd have to pick pretzels. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, Pepsi or Coke? Coke. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Favorite band or musician? Beatles. Um, Beatles. A musician could be, well, McCartney. Uh, what's your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday? That's a really good question. I'd say my favorite holiday is probably Christmas. Yeah, it's a good holiday. Yeah. And would you um would you like uh, like video games better or arcade games? Which games? Video games or arcade games? Arcade. Yeah. I like the, the, where you throw the ball up. The, oh, ski the, ball. Ski ball. Yeah, I like that too. And uh, my last question is, um, from the knowledge you have now, 
what advice would you give yourself when you started as a director? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, probably <laughs> um, expect, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Oh, that's really good. That's a really good thing to say uh, to say to your younger self. Um, yeah, and uh, I just thank you so much for doing this. This was really fun, and I learned a lot about um, about you and the movies you worked on. Well, thank you, Sienna, for having me. And I oh, honestly, you're my favorite interview I've ever done. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, you're, really, you're very good at it. You're a great listener, and there's great questions. And, and um, so believe me, you're going to have a great future doing this if you want to keep doing it. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Sure. Have a good rest of your day. You too, Sienna. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Mr. Deutsch. It was such an honor to speak with you, and thank you for sharing your stories. And now, before we search it up, here's a quick fun fact. Did you know that John Hughes, who wrote the movie, named it Pretty in Pink because it was Molly Ringwald's favorite song by the Psychedelic Furs? And now it's time to search it up. Let's see. Oh, Jennifer Polito was a set director on Pretty in Pink and also worked on Gilmore Girls, one of my all-time favorite TV shows. Well, see you next time to talk about Gilmore Girls. <laughs>